I am in love with this game, man. I've been playing it all week. I have I've really gone out of my way to just kind of just beat the completionist when it's coming to this game. I pretty much almost completed everything in this game. I've, I've went through all the trials, the Hunter Lodge. I've done all the quests, a lot of the side quests as well. And a little stuff in between, man. Finding the ancient armors and everything else, the, the weapons. I got to tell you guys, there's a lot of good things about it. But I really wanted to narrow it down to seven things that, that really captivated this game for me. The things that really define whether or not this is a game that you should be getting. And this is a game that you should be coming back to if a DLC dropped. So without further ado, let's get started. So first and foremost, guys, let me just go over the thing that really jumped out to me, man. Combat and its mechanics, dude. Okay, so a lot of times when I've played games before, especially when it comes to RPG, man, things things are a little sticky. You know what I mean? Nothing really feels fluid, man. That is the complete opposite with this game, man. Everything is very fluid. All the mechanics, man. And it almost makes me wish there was a multiplayer in this game. I'm sure some aspects will have to be removed because, you know, there's a lot of things that, like slows down time and stuff like that when you're aiming, but it's so fluid. And for a third person game, that's a hard thing to do, guys. And not only that is it fluid, but the, the, the mechanics of its combat is what really draws me in, man. I love the the strategy that I was having to take with every single one of the enemies I was going up against. You had to highlight them, man. You had to see exactly what their weakness was. There was never a moment that I could just run in there and just start spamming shots or, or spamming my, my R1 button or anything like that. I had to take time to figure out what that enemy is weak to, where I can hit him at, where he's weak at. And, or I'm gonna get just wrecked because that that's the thing about this game if you don't take the time to do those things You will get messed up and honestly, that's what made me enjoy it so much The combat also makes you take a big aim at using different ways to take down beasts You know rope caster which essentially ties down your enemies a trip caster Which allows you to stun targets that walk through your wires and of course there's a bunch of different traps uh, I myself was running into like really big, you know machines that was hard to take down And so what I would do is simply like set up literally like 18 traps and a shit ton of trip casters and would, would just lure them over there to them to let it just hit them and it would do massive amounts of damage but there's so many different ways to go about taking down enemies and i love the diverse nature of it you know when you're a low level as well terrain is kind of a big deal you know there was a lot of times that i was fighting you know different machines and and they were just too too big for me or too too heavy hitting for me and so actually moving around in the terrain getting getting some distance between you and them and getting like advantage points will allow you not to be as heavily damaged the fifth and final thing i want to say about combat mechanics though man is stealth dude so stealth has never been something that i've ever really enjoyed in many games y'all seen me play destiny man i fucking just run up and everything just start shooting away man smashing away stealth is a factor that i have never been a huge fan of or never really had the patience enough to actually take time this is a huge factor in this game you have to move uh, with stealth man if not your your stuff is going to get pushed in and that is something that i really enjoyed about the game though it's that it forces you to kind of go with stuff you know to me far cry was kind of that way it, it's an enjoyable factor to this game that is definitely required Now, number two on this list, guys, and this is something that Guerrilla Games has done better than I, I think I've ever seen from, from any other game developer, is they, they oversimplify the UI and they oversimplify the crafting and modification system. Uh, essentially, a lot, of, a lot of the game developers I see out there sometimes just overcomplicate things. And so I, I really appreciate the simplicity that they brought about here with the UI. Now, the UI essentially gives you a d-pad and the d-pad allows you to swap between you know potions and traps uh, all being done mid fight it slows down time and also gives you the ability to assign weapons to a weapon wheel now the beautiful thing about the weapon wheel is not the fact that it holds all of these weapons that you can cycle through it is the fact that you can craft materials for those weapons if you happen to run out of ammunition mid fight it slows down time and allows you to just go through and craft up anything that you need to craft up now as far as the modification system goes that is is very straightforward and very easy to understand essentially you can go in there and mod out either weapons or armor and you would ideally want to mod out your weapons I guess pretty much to the to the core values of that weapon so if the weapon is a bow and that bow tends to shoot fire arrows you would actually want to mod out that bow to up fire damage 
very easy to understand and very simple as far as crafting goes that's also very simple you can craft traps you can craft potions fast travel packs and of course you would want to craft carry capacity to allow you to carry more items now the beautiful thing about that is something that i really enjoy is that if carry capacity was suddenly an issue but i didn't have the materials on hand i could simply go to it and hold down square this would of course turn this job into an active quest which allows me to go and find the material extremely simple guys something i couldn't overlook because i love it when a game developer actually takes time to make things less complicated so the third thing i really liked about this game is that yes it is truly open world i mean everything is open from one end of the map to the other end and there's a lot of games like that you know skyrim definitely comes up uh and makes me think of that and i i really appreciate having a truly open world game there's been other rpgs i played in the past and i i've always been kind of like one of those that never never really liked the zone off issue where you would just have certain zones that would become active and as soon as you walk through a certain area and then that zone would become active i love the fact how open this game is and that's not open just horizontally but that's also open vertically so many structures so many things that you can actually to climb on and, and just get the view man i love the views and some of the things you climb do would make etio tip his hat man because i mean that was what was so amazing i love the tall necks coolest aspect of this game to get on top of those and override them The fourth thing I really want to bring up guys is the challenging nature of the hunter trial. So essentially you can join the hunter's lodge and even though you're a Nora, a lot of people are sitting there saying that you don't deserve to be there. You can still do the trials and go through it all and of course there's like separate quest lines. But specifically the trials and perfecting those trials is what I like the most. I mean it was one of my favorite factors of this game. It's super fun and challenging. Essentially if you complete all 15 trials with just three at five different locations and get 15 suns which can be traded in for three weapons the lodge war bow the lodge blast sling and the lodge rope caster so those are very powerful weapons and weapons that i was using throughout the mission and hunter trials is one of the kind of like the thing that i did like around like level 20 25 30 and so that's kind of what i wanted to do before i ever completed the storyline and i gotta say i highly recommend doing these before you do the story missions because they give you such great weapons plus they look freaking sweet So the fifth thing guys that I feel like this game is really taking it to a level that I've never seen it is the overriding of machines man. So essentially there's cauldrons throughout the entire map and you go through you you pretty much fight through the cauldron and you override that exact cauldron and that unlocks other machines that you can now override. This really lays out some really cool stuff man because I, I essentially did all the cauldrons was able to start overriding everything and it's so cool to actually see them all fight it out man especially if you can override a really big machine and see what it can do they can do some massive amount of damage they can also aid you in whatever you're trying to do and so i really really enjoyed that aspect and it's also an aspect of this game that i haven't seen in really any rpg i've ever played the, the fact that you can override these machines like this and make them your ally So the sixth thing without a doubt it's going to be the thing that's going to draw you into this game and it's going to keep you playing it every single time to try to just figure it out man is is the mystery the mystery behind why is there you know machine animals why is the world 
in the state that it's in right now you know what happened you know and and you know of course as you see you're you're obviously using a bow and arrow you're using a spear everything has kind of went back to his prehistoric times there's also uh you know machine machines around the world that that not only take the shape of what modern animals would be but but they also take like a shape of other animals such as prehistoric animals you know, saber-toothed tigers uh you know also you know, t-rex and so these are the kind of things, man, that that really brings about this this urgency to try to figure out what is going on, what happened. And, and of course, the, the question always comes back to Aloy of who am I? Where did I come from? Another aspect about it that I really like that they also twisted into this mystery was was the the urgency that all of the the characters have, man, the the dialogue in which they all represent themselves. I can tell you right now, there's so many games that I play these days, man that are, are you know big games triple-a games that has no quality behind their stories and this is a top tier quality storyline game and not only does it just come from the the sense of a great narrative but it also is delivered so wonderfully well by each one of the characters in the game and that's what sells it they don't just speak in this monotone flat tone that i have personally heard from many characters in many other games no the characters in these games man they speak with emotion and that is because whoever was directing their narrative was actually taking the time to tell them exactly how they needed to sound what the sense of urgency is and the sense that the character is in right now and that is the thing that truly went beyond in delivering what this game is supposed to feel like evacuation happens so fast no time to think things through. No time for goodbyes. There were lines in the medical ward. I told Tom Pake I'd be with him when he went under. But there was one last shipment of parody Sadie Zygos I could get processed if I rushed. I'm still angry at him for forcing me to choose. Angry at myself for... Well, he died alone. And I didn't get the bloody birds of paradise saved either. All the time left in the world now to think. Gaia Prime's locks are sealed. Elysium sealed up, safe and sound. A distance of miles, but it might as well be on the other side of the galaxy. The seventh and final thing, man, that's going to truly be the cherry on top. The thing that's going to make you fall in love with this game. And the thing that made me fall in love with this game to the point that I'll replay it a number of times to the point that if a DLC was to drop, I would buy it immediately, first day, no questions asked, would jump on board, is Aloy herself, man. Aloy has become one of the most admirable heroines I have ever actually dealt with. And I gotta say, she has quickly become probably in the top five of my favorite protagonist characters in, in gaming history. Uh, everything about her is wonderful and it's not just from the sense of you know she's just a badass with a bow but also from the sense of she's human and that's what was so cool about this is that there were so many times again this is one of those things that the selling point was dialogue but so many times that her own dialogue was such a selling point for me that I got to see not only her being a badass out there and you know slaying for days but also her being human man for her taking time and 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 you know questioning things of like where where did I come from who am I you know what what am I supposed to be and what is my destiny and it all kind of just filters right back into I think some of the questions we ask in our own lives but I, I really enjoyed playing this character and a character that I know I will pick up in a heartbeat in the future if a DLC drops for this game you hear that nobody's getting past the Vanguard we're here for Meridian and we're here for you thank you Aaron Ursa would be proud well, only if we win Elizabeth, with a weight like this pressing on you. How did you rust after you lost your family? Silence? Are you there? 
Guess I shouldn't ask ghosts for advice. Slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>